Uh, in this video I'll be explaining how selective reabsorption works. Um, the first two stages in making urine are ultrafiltration, which is basically where uh, molecules are filtered out of the blood, and uh, that happens in the Bowman's capsule. Uh, the second part is selective reabsorption, which looks at basically reabsorbing some of those uh, useful molecules which were filtered out of the blood during ultrafiltration, and this takes place in the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay, uh, on the screen are a list of molecules which are found in the blood. Uh, some of these will be removed from the blood during ultrafiltration. These will include water molecules, amino acids, glucose, urea, uric acid, creatinine, and some ions. Uh, the proteins and the cells are too large to uh, uh, pass through the basement membrane of the uh, Bowman's capsule and so remain in the blood. On the screen you have a zoomed in view of the proximal convoluted tubule. Uh, as you can see, as the glomerular filtrate uh, moves uh, down the proximal convoluted tubule, this is the stuff that's been filtered out during ultrafiltration. Uh, some of that stuff that's been filtered out, the useful things, will be reabsorbed in selective reabsorption into the capillaries which surround this part of the nephron. Uh, this uh, slide here uh, again shows another view of the proximal convoluted tubule. Uh, on the left hand side we have the capillaries, uh, the yellow things are the proximal convoluted tubule cells and uh, coming down from the Bowman's capsule okay, on the right hand side this will be the lumen of the proximal convoluted tubule and it will contain some of those molecules that have been filtered out during ultrafiltration. Now the proximal convoluted tubule cells are uh, adapted in many ways to carry out their function. Uh, they have many mitochondria because they are active. Uh, you can see the membrane has been folded. This is uh, the folds are called microvilli, and this will increase surface area. We have uh, co-transporters in the membrane. I'll talk more about those in a minute. And we have sodium potassium pumps. Uh, the picture on the screen uh, shows an example of a co-transporter. Now it's not uh, one that is found in the uh, proximal convoluted tubule, but it shows uh, how they work. Uh, they are transport proteins, they are found in the membrane of cells. Uh, they transport two molecules at the same time from one side of the membrane to the other. This uh, image shows another example of a co-transporter. Uh, in this case, uh, the uh, transporter uh, allows uh, hydrogen ions and sucrose to pass through at the same time. Won't allow one to go uh, across the membrane without the other. So, how does this all work? Uh, right on the right-hand side of the screen, we have all the molecules that were taken from the blood during ultrafiltration. Uh, we're going to focus though initially on what's happening on the left side of the screen with the sodium potassium pumps. Uh, now, the pumps. They pump sodium one way and potassium the other. Sodium is pumped out into the blood and potassium returns and takes its place in the PCT cells. And energy in the form of ATP is used to make this happen. Uh, why do we want to do this? We want to lower the sodium concentration in the PCT cells. Uh, the reason for this is if you look on the right hand side of the screen we have sodium that was filtered out during ultrafiltration. We actually have a high concentration of sodium in the lumen of the uh, of the uh, PCT. Sodium want to diffuse from the lumen into the PCT cells from the high to the low concentration but the only way it can do this, the only way it can diffuse through is by going through the, one, of the, one of those co-transporters and bringing one of the useful molecules with it whether that be glucose, amino acid, vitamin or an iron. So they will diffuse into the PCT cells and then diffuse into the capillaries. Urea uh, though we don't want to reabsorb it, it's a very small molecule and we can't stop that happening. Okay, it goes straight through uh, the uh, membranes. And because we have all of those solutes now removed from uh, the, uh, the filtrate, uh, this has a, now a very high water potential. Uh, certainly higher than the uh, blood in the capillaries. And so water will move by osmosis from the high water potential, which is in, in, the, uh, in the filtrate, to the lower water potential, in the capillaries. In fact, most of the water that was filtered out of the blood is reabsorbed here. Uh, 